That's how we get to that level of acuity. And you know, when you're in that level of acuity, you're in a, you're in a space where everything seems to make sense to you right at that moment. Because it's, it's become almost like it's in your DNA. Some of you have heard me talk in the past a little bit about a, a family friend of ours named Jimmy Johnston. I, I sometimes jokingly call him our nephew, even though he's actually my sister's nephew on her husband's side. So he's not technically related to us, but he's so talented that he's my nephew. And <laughs> Jim started playing the piano when he was six. He started taking piano lessons that same year. His mother found a piano teacher literally on their, own, on their same street. And all the way that he was going through middle school and even into high school, he actually took a piano lesson every day, every weekday, Monday through Friday. When Jim was 16, the piano teacher came down to his mom, Marge, and said, I'm done. He, he, he's passed me. So she had to find another teacher. Well, then they decided, well, where should he go to learn to be even better? Well, naturally, it was the Juilliard School of Music in New York. So I don't know if you know how you get into Juilliard. You get in on an audition. You get to audition for 20 minutes. They really don't particularly care what your grades are. They don't particularly care whether you had lots of great events like they do at other schools. You get a 20-minute audition. Now, we happened to be just, it was total accident. My wife and I happened to be in New York on the day that Jim auditioned. And we called his mom and dad and said, do you want to come over to the hotel and we can all chew our nails together? <laughs> you know, waiting for him to come back from the audition. So we're all sitting in the, in the Novotel. You may know where that is in New York. It's right up near the David Letterman Theater. We're all sitting in the, in the, in the Novotel and we're all like, oh, Jim, 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 you know, kind of praying a little bit and chanting a little bit. Suddenly, here comes the knock, you know. Open the door, there's Jim. He has on a great, you know, high school kid. Has on a leather jacket, has got on his New York Yankees hat backwards. And he comes into the room like this. Oh, yeah. 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 I said, Jim, did, did you nail it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He knew. He knew he'd gotten it. He just, you know, you know. Now. Okay, I'm an opportunist. I said, Jim, what did you do right before you went in for the audition? Now, I was vaguely interested in Jim. I was mostly interested in something I could use in a speech. I hate to say that. But I <laughs> I was hoping he'd say, I sat quietly in a corner of the backstage area and prayed that God would give, you know, sorry. Or I visualized myself <laughs> on the main stage at Carnegie Hall. And when I finished, hundreds of people rose as one and the thunderous, I was hoping he'd say that. He said, I drank three Coca-Colas really fast. Write it down. <laughs> it's the sixth truth for Glenna Salisbury. <laughs> Three Cokes, <laughs> really fast. Well, after Jim got into Juilliard, this is great because my wife and I traveled to New York quite a bit and during the four years, by the way, he went on to, then to Yale for his master's degree in the Manhattan School of Music for his PhD, thank you very much. But anyhow, while he was at Juilliard, we would bribe him by saying, can we come over to the dorm if, and you, would you play for us? And if you do, we'll take out the dinner. So this one day we go into the, and you can imagine these practice rooms in, at, at Juilliard are these amazingly acoustical places. So we're sitting in the room and Jim comes in and he sits down at the piano, he has no music in front of him and he plays this amazing piece of music. Now, I can cry reading the phone book, you know. I, I, <laughs> I can cry reading my electric bill. <laughs> I, I can cry reading what people are doing in Washington, D.C. right now. I can cry very easily. But I, <laughs> but I sat there and tears were just streaming down my face. 
It was so beautiful. And he's just this handsome, delicious kid, you know, 20 years old. And he looked over when he finished and he said, oh, uh, uh, Lou, I'm sorry. I, I, I. No, I said, Jim, <laughs> Jim, no. no, don't be sorry. I'm just sorry. It's so good, you know, it's so good. He said, well, I could have done it better. And then here was the phrase, and he gave it, it was a gift. He said, it isn't in my fingers yet. When you're in that state of acuity, the music of your business, it's in your fingers.